morning, Art Hostage here and we're going to do another episode. Now this is going to be episode 89, okay, and it's going to be a comparison between, right, the Emperor Nero and Daniel Kinahan, right, because I think you might be interested, okay, to hear the story of Nero and then if you make a comparison, right, to modern day, to Daniel Kinahan, Okay, right, the comparisons, right, are quite stark. Okay, and as it's playing out, right, so this is going to be a, quite a long one, right, I'm reading about this, right, so I'm going to try to read you, and I'm, listen, don't worry that I, I'm going to butcher all the names. Okay, but I'm going to have a go. Right, here we go. Nero, right, Nero Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus. Right, come on, I'm glad he weren't a footballer. Can you imagine having to pay for that on the back of the T-shirt? Right, anyway, he was born 15th of December, AD 37. Right, and he died 9th of June, AD 68. Okay, right, now, he was the fifth emperor, fifth Roman emperor, and the last emperor of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, reigning from AD 54 until his suicide in 68. He was adopted by the Roman Emperor Claudius at the age of 13 and succeeded him on the throne. Nero seemed to have been popular with members of the Praetorian Guard and with the lower class commoners in Rome and the provinces, but was deeply resented by the Roman aristocracy. But well, there's a comparison, isn't you? you know, uh, that Daniel Kinahan going into boxing, right, with the, with the lower boxers, right, trying to bribe them with money and then make them launder his drug money, right, so he became popular with them, the Praetorian Guard, right, uh, yeah, in boxing, okay, he became popular with them, with the aristocracy, I suppose, like Bob Arum, right, they, um, that they didn't, he was deeply resented, well, yeah, because he was putting his hand in his pocket, right, and making him um, pay money, okay, right, and also, not only the aristocracy, but with the, um, Governments as well, right? So there's a comparison, right? Most contemporary sources describe Nero, right, as a tyrannical, self-indulgent and debauched. Well, yeah, tyrannical, Daniel Kinahan, yet yeah, self-indulgent. Well, yeah, okay, although he dresses like dog shit, but apart from that, yeah, self-indulgent. Debauched, well, I don't know. Um, yeah, well, I think they were into pegging back in the old Ru uh, Roman days, weren't they, right? So I suppose Sarah Vaughan, Pegging Daniel Kinahan, it fits in with a Nero image, maybe. Right here, after being declared a public enemy by the Roman Senate, right, Nero committed suicide age 30. How about that, right? Well, today, D Daniel Kinahan is public enemy number one in the world because of Otinol, right, uh, the, uh, the world's most wanted drug trafficker. He was extradited two days ago to the US. So number one on the list now, is Daniel Kinahan, although you could say Semyon Mogilevich, right, but he's been an on, on and off the wanted list for donkey's years, so he's used to that. So there's another comparison to um, Nero, right, after being declared a public enemy by the Roman Senate, Nero committed suicide at thir age 30. Well, whether that be the outcome or not, right, well, maybe, um, you know, if it's all burning down, right, like Nero, well, uh, we'll see. Right, Nero was born at Antium in AD 37, the son of Dominus, right, I ain't going to try and say the surname, right, and Agrippina the Younger, a great-granddaughter of the em Emperor Augustus. When Nero was two years old, his father died. His mother married the Emperor Claudius, who eventually adopted Nero as his heir. When Cla Claudius died in 54, Nero became emperor with the support of the Praetorian Guard, Praetor Praetorian Guard and the Senate. In the early years of his reign, Nero was advised and guided by his mother, Agrippina. His tutor, Seneca the Younger, and his Praetorian prefect, right, Sextus Afranius Burrus. But he soon thought to rule independently and to rid himself of restraining influences. Oh, where well, we heard that before. So, when I mean, you could rewrite that as Daniel Kenahan was advised and guided in his early years, right, by his father, Christ, uh, Christie, 
okay, right, by other people, and maybe his mother, and then all of a sudden, Daniel Kinahan wants to rule independently, and he wants to rid himself of restraining influences. Well, looking back, those restraining influences actually were correct. Keep your head down, keep quiet. You know what I mean? So all of a sudden now, we can see early on, right, that Daniel's taking the same road as Nero. Anyway, right, here we go. His power struggle with his mother was eventually resolved when he had her murdered. Oh, blimey. Well, yeah, well, his mum died, didn't she? Daniel Kennan's mum, right, but there's no suggestion there. I've never heard anything like that. He had her murdered, right, but she died, his mother. Okay, right, well, so that you can make a comparison. Roman sources also implicate Nero in the deaths of his wife, Claudia Octavia. Oh, hello. Right, supposedly so that he could marry Poppea Sabina. Well, Daniel didn't have to um, kill his first wife, did he, right? But he's um, now married um, the other woman, what's her name, in 2017. And of his foster brother, right, Britannicus, right? Well, oh, blimey, this Nero was killing everyone. Right, most Roman sources present Nero as a sexually dissolute. Well, I don't know what that means, right? Well, you know what I mean? He is said to have married a freed man, right, Pythagoras, right, acting the part of a bride at the ceremony. Oh, hang on, here we go. Pythagoras, right, is he the man with the maths, is he? Pythagoras' his theory. Cool, yeah, well, his theory, right, that he, that he had to marry Nero. Oh, dear, oh, dear. After Popeye's death, in unclear circumstances, Nero, in short succession, married an aristocratic woman, right, Statilia Messiana, right? Well, that could be like Daniel, couldn't it? He married a, a, a criminal um, aristocratic woman, right, the, in, in 2017, right? And another freed man, right? Well, what's, what's all this in the Romans? Keep marrying free men or all this. Sporus, whom... Oh, Sporus whom he had castrated. God, they're right. He only didn't want to marry Sporus, right? He had him castrated. Right, okay. Well, that comes in with a pegging game, doesn't it, I suppose? Well, you know, I mean, there's another comparison. Nero's practical contributions to Rome's government focused on diplomacy, trade, and culture. Here you go, right? Well, yeah, well, Daniel Kinahan, right? He would argue that he's um, contributed to diplomacy in the uh, criminal underworld. Trade right, with, um, uh, yeah, global super cartel of drugs and culture, yeah, he's infiltrated boxing. Nero ordered the construction of amphitheatres, promoted athletic games and contests, and made public appearances as an actor, poet, musician, right, and charioteer. Yeah, well, that's another Daniel thing, isn't it? Yeah, here you go. Right, yeah, another comparison. Right, this scandalised his aristocratic contemporaries as these occupations were usually the domain of slaves, public entertainers and infamous persons. The provision of such entertainments made Nero popular amongst lower class citizens. I mean, another comparison. Right, but his performances undermined the imperial dignity. Yeah, well, that's the thing, yeah. Daniel Kennerton, right, he has undermined the imperial dignity of looking smart, right, with them stupid um, sneakers on, right, and tracksuit bottoms and a T-shirt, right, you know what I mean? So, yeah, right, anyway, the costs involved were borne by local elites either directly or through taxation and were much resented. Yeah, there you go, right, well... Yeah, the elites in boxing, right, don't like it. Daniel Kinnan's come in, right, and he's taking all the money, right, and that's why he's been resented. Okay, right, you know what I mean? I'm not taking sides here, right, but, you know, that's what's happened. During Nero's reign, reign the general Cor Corbulo fought the Roman Parthian War of 58 to 63 and made peace with the hostile Parthian Empire. The Roman general, right, Sutinus, or right, Paulinius, quashed a major revolt in Britain led by Iceni's queen, right, Boudicca, right, or Boudicca, right, Boudicca, right, well, he turned, he, he, he um, put down the major revolt by her, right, okay. The Bosporian kingdom was briefly annexed to the empire and the first Jewish-Roman war began. Oh, hang on, right, it's starting on us, are they? Bleeding Romans, right, yeah. Remember Masada. Right, any here we go, right? Um, 
When the Roman Senate of Vindex rebelled with support from the eventual Roma, Roman Emperor Galba, Nero was declared a public enemy and condemned, condemned to death in absentia. Oh, hang on, right? Yeah, like Raphael Imperiali, he was sentenced in absentia. The parallels are, you know, uncanny, aren't they? He, Nero fled Rome and on 9th of June, right, AD 68, he committed suicide. His death sparked a brief period of civil war known as the Year of the Four Emperors. Well, there's another one there, right? Well, you know, the, the demise of Daniel Kenahan could spark the brief period of civil war. Okay, right, and, you know, let's hope there's not going to be blood on the streets. Well, that's another comparison. Right, um, where are we? Right, M Most Roman sources offer overwhelmingly negative assessments of his personality and reign. The historian, right, Tacitus, claims the Roman people thought him compulsive and corrupt. Right, Suetonius, right, uh, tells that many Romans believe that the great fire of Rome was instigated by Nero to clear land for his planned golden house. Right, so now, well, that's where it comes from. Nero fiddled while Rome burned, right? Well, he's meant to have torched it, right? He's meant to have been the arsonist. Okay, well, yeah, well, Daniel Kenahan certainly burnt down the house of uh, boxing and he's burning down the um, organised um, global crime cartel. What about if it comes out that he was he was stuck in to do that? That was um, the Kenahan's uh, role, was to build up um, global crime, condense it, right, into a small area, right, and then take it down. I mean, that would be that would be a turn up, wouldn't it? it really, in the, in the bigger picture of it, right, he was employed to build up global organised crime, con concentrate it, and then dismantle it. Something to think about anyway, right? Here, where are we now, right? Tacitus claims that Nero seized Christians as scape uh, scapegoats for the fire and had them burnt alive, seemingly motivated not by public justice but by personal cruelty. Well, that's, yeah, again, right? So now Daniel Kenahan's blaming everyone else, right? And he's having them all burnt, right, and arrested. I think there's about 60 or 70, right, Kenahan soldiers that are in jail in Ireland without all the others. Right, that's another comparison. Some modern historians question the reliability of the ancient sources on Nero's tyrannical acts, considering his popularity amongst among the, the Roman commoners, right? So they're not saying, you know, not about the sources. Well, I don't know. Where are they getting this information on Nero? I mean, maybe it was um, a Roman art hostage. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe there was art hostage around in the Roman times. Right, and he didn't have a podcast, right? But he used to um, stand in the square, right, and uh, give updates every day, like I do. <laughs> right, anyway. I like this. This is funny, isn't it? Right, anyway. In the eastern provinces of the empire, a popular legend arose that Nero had not died and would return. Oh, hang on, here we go. Where have we heard that before? Someone dying and come back, right? Here. So if we hear that Daniel kenahan has been found dead, right, well, there will be a legend, won't there? He ain't really dead. He's in witness protection program. And then he would return, like the bad penny, right? After his death, at least three leaders of short-lived, failed rebellions presented themselves as Nero reborn. Oh, they're all having a go, right? I'm Spartacus, right? So afterwards, I'm Daniel Kinahan. No, I'm Daniel Kinahan. No, I'm Daniel Kinahan, right? That is going to be a Spartacus moment, isn't it, right? Yeah, anyway, right, yeah. After his death, at least three leaders of short-lived failed rebellions presented themselves as Nero reborn in order to gain popular support. Mind you, they've been doing it for donkeys, you see, right? And you see, um, what's his name? Um, um, Him, right? Boris Johnson, he keeps invoking Churchill. And then, you know, American politicians have invoked... Um, Previous presidents, Kennedy and all that, right? So they, you know, they're all so really, right? You see, it comes goes all the way back to the Roman times, reinventing yourself. She does it, doesn't she? Madonna, right? Like me and you, right? Change her socks, she changes her image. Clever girl, though. Got to give her her credit, though. Anyway, right? Early life. Do you want to talk about his early life, right? I'm not sure about that. His reign, his residencies, right? Yeah, outside Rome, Nero had several villas or palaces built, the ruins of which can still be seen today. Yeah, well, instead of outside Rome, you could say, right, outside Dubai, 
Daniel Kinahan had several villas or palaces built, the ruins of which can still be seen today. It's funny, isn't it, eh? Right, the, um, it's funny the connections, right? And him, what's his name, right? Um, Johnny Morrissey, he named his, um, um, his Volker, Nero Volker. Right, see, it's, you know, strange, isn't it, right? It's, there's all these connections. And if you read about, right, him, Nero, and you compare him to Daniel Kinahan, right, it's uncanny. Right, you know, you know, you know, you can look back on all what's happened with like the murders and all that game, right? And it's um, it's uncanny. And so it might be a you know a consideration there, right, for some journalists, right, to do a side by side with um, the Roman Emperor Nero, right, and Daniel Kinahan, right, and it'd be amazing how many of them you know link up. So what we're we gonna see then, the end game. How's it going to turn out? You know, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? You know, um, could he fake his death? Will he be suicided? Will he be assassinated and it made to look like suicide? Right, or the best outcome, will he hand himself in and avail himself to the judicial system, which I think would be the best thing, wouldn't it? You know, um, and I think, I suppose he'll be worried like Lee Harvey Oswald was. So we might see him in bulletproof stuff, I don't know. Right, well, it's just interesting, isn't it? You know, as a historian, you know, I mean, although I like contemporary history, right, the, um, I just notice, keep noticing the comparisons between Daniel Kinahan and the Emperor Nero. Let's see if he can have a different outcome then. Well, anyway, this is Art Hostage, episode 89, the Emperor Nero compared to Daniel Kinahan, or the other way round. Daniel Kinahan compared to the Emperor Nero. Art hostage over and out.